Hi everyone, in this video I'll be going over the steps for creating a dome. This dome is going to be a bit different than the ones that I've created in the past. This one I'll make sure that it's a solid one so you can go ahead and 3D print it. Um, that is a question that I got in a previous video. They wanted to make it into a watertight solid and that's difficult to do when you start uh, doing pipes or a wireframe like I did in the other video. So in this one I'll be going over the additional steps that it's required for you to create a solid. So I've already skipped most of the steps and um, I'm here with the pattern that I created at the bottom. Here we have a circle which is going to be the shape. Then we create the dome shape with the profile and a rail. And then we project that geometry up. We also project those lines and those uh, dots or, or or points up. And so, as you can see here, we have that completed dome. Now, the next steps that I'm going to take are going to go over the the fairly straightforward steps for creating each. Uh, each of these are going to become solid and then you're going to union them and put them all together to make it into a solid. So uh, let's get started here. Now that we have the geometry here without any thicknesses, let's go ahead and copy this over. That way we don't mess with the original. And then go ahead and hide that one. And let's focus on this on this uh, pattern. Now that you are here, let's make sure we know exactly where the center is. So go here to the center and as you can see the center of the pattern. Let's go to the top view. The center of the pattern is here. And it's symmetrical this way. So what we want to do is keep this portion and disregard the rest because it is symmetrical so we can copy those over. So let's keep those lines there and let's go ahead and start ungrouping these. As you can see here, we have this section, which one way to check to see if that is the segment that you need is you rotate from this point to this point, and then you're going to want to click there, and you see it's perfectly symmetrical because it starts copying over. So we know we have that section correct. Now that we have this section, one thing that I want to make sure you do and you have to do for this type of dome is these triangles have to be complete these have to be completely closed triangles. There's a triangle in each one of these. That's a very critical uh, part for you to make sure to have because that'll make sure that you it can be watertight and solid. So from this point, let's um, let's go ahead and give it the thickness that we want. So depending on how thick you want it, you want to offset this distance. So let's make it 12 inches, or let's make it 8 inches. So now we have, that's where it sits now, and this is where we want to go. So the way to do that is you select select these objects here and then you type in scale make sure you go to the center point and quadrants here center point quadrant you want to scale from there and here it's going to say copy you want to say yes 
that way when you come out here it creates a brand new copy right on top and that gives you a thickness of 8 inches there or a continuous thickness now um, it, it really does depend on wh how thick you want it but that's that's the base that's the first initial step you need to take from this point it's a matter of creating a loft so we're gonna start creating the solids so let's type in solid one and let's give it a different type of color a magenta something bright so we can see and that and now that we have that created we have this current we have all of these lines offset now we can go ahead and select the two corresponding ones and type in loft and then if, as long as these two are going in the same direction it should give you a lofted surface between those two triangles and you can go ahead and finish off doing that by going from left to right making sure you only have that triangle and then you type in loft what I like to do is going I like going on the outside first and I'll show you why um, we create the perimeter here first create the perimeter here So we're just doing the outside ones for now. And this is this is a bit of a tricky part because you have to make sure that every single triangle is lofted together. Okay. So now we have the these outside ad, outside ones complete. Now we have to do this inside one, this inside one, and all of these inside triangles. So let's do that. Loft. This inside triangle. Then you're going to find that this inside triangle hasn't been completed. This one. This one, which is a hidden one. And now we can get this part. This part. There's a one hidden in here. And now we're left with one, two, three, four that we have to complete. So we have one. So basically we go in order from outside in. And to check to make sure to see if you created any duplicates, type in S E L D U P to select duplicates, and it should say no duplicates found, which means that there's no overlapping geometry here. We have that one, but we also have that inside one. So we have two here, we have two here. So they're in, on the inside. There's going to be overlapping ones, but that we ha that now we have that first solid. Now let's type in solid two this let's make it like a lighter like a lighter blue a purple and so make that current bring back the geometry out here and this is going to be an easy step because you can just select everything except for those and type in planar surface which will create a plane in every single Tri at every single triangle. It basically completes the plane and the triangle is easy to make a plane because there's only three points. So now that we have that and we have this we can go ahead and make it into a solid. Okay I just created a new layer here and that will that'll be to um, when we join these together we want to go ahead and change the object to the layer little by little we'll make our way around and that way we'll ensure that because we can't select everything and just say join because there's coplanar surfaces here that are going to try to join in a direction that we don't want 
so that's one of the things that you're going to have to do in uh, do by hand so join basically same thing that we did before select make sure you select all of them one two and three and then type in j for join and then change the object layer we're going to go do that all the way around so j enter right click change optical layer j enter change object layer j enter change object layer Here's another trick if you are trying to join them together and, um, and change the layer. You can go ahead and select it, type in J for join, and then M-A-T to match properties. Select that one and then hit OK. What it does is it'll match the properties instead of having to go right here and change object, object layer. So. So now we've successfully created all of the sections and they're completely 100% solid which will help us create that watertight design that that some of us need for 3D modeling or 3D printing. Okay, now that we have all of these sections, let's go ahead and select them together and I'll show you a trick. We're going to block, create a block out of this. That way, um, let's see, not centered. That way we can um, rotate it around and mess around with it and have everything update at once. So let's do that. I'm going to rotate, make sure I copy. And I go from here to here to here to here to here to here. So you can see we've now completed our dome with our solid sections here. And what's nice about having a block is that now that you have the block and these are individual cells, you can do so much with it. Now that we have these blocks and sections, let's make it a completely solid a completely solid dome, just so you can go ahead and 3D print. So explode this block here. Let's keep this one here with the individual segments. That way we don't lose that work. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go inside of the block we're going to type in boolean union and it should turn this into a perfect solid that has no, nothing on the inside and it's watertight and if you hit ok you'll see that all of these are also solids and if we go ahead and select all of them and we explode the block there's six blocks here now these are individual solids that we can boolean union for a watertight structure. Okay, so we have this as a solid and you want it to be on a flat plane, right? Well, one way to do that is type in bounding box and then you're going to move vertically to that point or to a point that intersects the whole dome. And so if we stretch these, we're going to type in Boolean difference. And now we have a 
a rounded shaped dome that you can 3D print. So that's one trick. So that's the way that you would create a completely solid dome with a thickness so you can go ahead and 3D print. Now you could also go ahead and just create the outside one, push this down onto this, and then make the whole thing into a solid without a thickness. So there's different ways of doing, of creating a solid. Here is a quick bonus on how to create something interesting fairly quickly so let's go back and try to let's take this type in block set the point type in block 02 and then let's rotate this thing and make sure we copy it all the way around as we did in the last example but what's cool is that now these sections we can go ahead and come in here and type in pipes and this is if you're not trying to 3D or the 3D print or anything this will give you other ways of of doing other I mean getting different results so let's type in here type in pipe multiple and let's go around here Okay, so that's another way you can create something interesting. It, it'll just take for you to do it on one section, and it'll go ahead and create it throughout the whole thing. That is pretty, pretty cool. And when you go ahead and render it, you'll be able to see kind of the geometry of those sections. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or um, any other thoughts for other videos. Thank you very much for watching.